Okay, we are live. Okay, so I'm just going to go on my Facebook page and uh-huh. meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. All right, sister. All right. Woohoo. Okay. Great. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so I'm going to record and then we'll start. Sounds good. Hello, my peoples. Welcome to Enlighten Hour. Uh, today, I am with my beautiful, wonderful, dear friend, Benita. I just had an inspiration to ask her to come on and share with us all. Um, and I'll let you discover for yourself how amazing she is. And because uh, we've had, if you've, if you've been with me for a while, <clears throat> or us, you know that we have done a couple of truth talks together mm -hmm. that are on YouTube. You can find them on YouTube. We did one on meditation. We did one on money. money. Mm -hmm. On the fear of dying. On the fear of dying. When, when yeah, when uh, the corona just started, we did yep. all that. Um, yeah, so Benita, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me and playing with me today. My pleasure, always. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. being back together. So tell us, what are you up to? What's going on in your life? Well, it is, of course, this wonderfully rich, fertile time mm. uh, just for being. Um, mm. And to, I just came from this amazing Alexander Technique class, mm. which for people who don't know what that is, I'm still learning what it is. So I don't, <laughs> probably won't give it a great description, but um, let's just call it a study in natural body movement. Mm -hmm. so this guy Alexander went through this whole like life process of realizing he wanted to distill down like body movement like why he did certain things he was actually an actor mm -hmm. and it was about projecting and like that started the whole thing off for him because he would really strain his voice so he came to question how he was using his body and maybe that had something to, to do with it because doctors couldn't figure it out anyway so he goes on this whole like lifelong journey then from there exploring natural body movement and um, the woman who I study with is just, I don't even know how to, she's like Yoda. She's <laughs> just, it's like a moving meditation for an hour mm. where you're in this space exploring. She uses the word yield a lot. So that's mm -hmm. the word I was going to use like describing that. the last eight, nine months is like a constant yielding. Mm to whatever the next thing might be that pops up that creates whatever it creates in what we would identify as the person self, right? Like the mind mm -hmm. and then the emotions we attach to the thoughts in the mind and stuff comes up and there's a lot coming up right now. And so that's why it feels like it's so like juicy and fertile to me is it's just like, oh, right. Oh, this is showing up now. Oh, right. Whether it's collectively or then how that might affect me or my yeah. family or whatever personally. Yeah. So there's just been like a lot of yielding or else I use the phrase, you know, when people say, how are you like riding the waves, it's just mm -hmm. this really wavy. Sometimes I do feel very affected by what's happening in the collective or like feel really heavy or tired or like sad. Like this is super intense, certainly feeling the anxiety and fear that many others are feeling right? There's those days. And then there are these days yeah. where I'm like super excited. I see how much change, catalyst, transparency is happening, like in the midst of how much is clearly not true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're right? seeing like all the untruths and that can be really destabilizing for people to realize, wow, all these things I believed in mm -hmm. systems, structures, policy, procedure, people, whatever that we've put like a weight on is like authority figure who keeps me safe. Yep. Well, it's clearly being shown that like none of that is actually, <laughs> none of that actually creates true safety and security. Mm -hmm. And right. So then it creates this like wavy experience um, for the collective. Mm -hmm. But then again, I go right back. Like, I think it's just also my blueprint and how I'm kind of, how I operate. My operating system is to like come right back around to like, oh, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> because it only means that we are evolving 
Yeah. You know, I think at the most basic level term, but like consciousness rising, people are using that description or a, a sort of a great, greater awakening happening mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right now, or it's speeding up the awakening that's yeah. been happening for the last few decades. You know, so just inter- like, I find it all very exciting. Yes. Um, and yeah, I've been riding the waves. Um, you know, I coach, I have my own coaching business and consulting business, and it has been doing very well you know, for like sort of a 3D term, because we'll talk about like kind of old world versus new world, Mm -hmm. like in the terms of it being Mm -hmm. self-sustaining and fulfilling and co-creations happening, like Mm -hmm. that's just been consistent Mm -hmm. throughout this whole time. Um, Well, for the last three years, but it's just continued on the same really. And I think it's continued Mm -hmm. on because it's still my highest excitement. So from a more new world perspective, like it as a state of creation for me has not shifted. Yeah. If anything, it's like become more yep. exciting. Mm-hmm. So there's been some clarifying things within there, like how I'm working with certain people or how I approach certain things, or um, we were talking about this um, as we were sort of preparing for this call, but there's a sense in some regard of busyness lately yeah. because there've been lots of co-creations appearing and opportunity to explore things and working with new people and consistent flow of clients, then other things have to fall away. Yeah. So that's also the waviness too. It's like, yeah. oh, there's this like up swing and fe- things are feeling full. And it's like, oh, I know for me, I want to actually bring it down a notch because yep. that just feels like it resonates more with like my vibratory state or like where I'm at in my days. Okay. I was on a committee of a wonderful organization here. Um, we live in Richmond, Virginia now. And yeah, for some people who have been following along with us might know that, but if not, I lived in New York City for 25 years. And we moved here a couple of years ago and like inserting myself into community here just to see what that felt like. And so there's a part of me that would still really love to stay committed and like connected to that organization for those types of like really, you know, we use the term 3D, but like, yeah. Their density, like systems and structures right now. We're all, yeah. Like, yeah. The, the world is like, it can be seen more conventionally, circumstantially. But that would be my mind saying, oh yeah, stay involved in that thing for all of these shoulds reasons. Yeah. yeah. And instead my heart was like, no, my highest excitement is leading me toward these other co-creations. So with integrity, I'm going to send them a note of such gratitude and love because I love them dearly. And I want to continue to promote some of their programming and things that speak to me. Okay, did that. And it can now shift away. So it's just like the riding of the wave in all of these ways. And mm-hmm. same with our family. We do school from home and we have for three years. So it was like starting, we had a full regular summer break because we didn't have to be navigating like maybe switching or changes in schooling dynamic. We just yeah. were continuing on with the same program. So that was actually, I had the lowest level of like mental busyness about school that I've had in years because we're just like doing this. And it was such a contrast to what many others were experiencing. And so my heart was certainly with many people and I was able to support clients who were navigating some of that stuff during that time. And even now, like people are still, you know, it's like a constantly moving target. I think kind of how, how do we educate our children? What does that look like? It's raising lots of wonderful questions. Oh yeah. But we, so, but we were just like, okay, we just continue on. Yep. We, we know the drill this year for us. And, yep. and yet still while navigating, like, is it working for our son? And, you know, yeah. do, does it feel like it's aligned for him and for us, et cetera. So that's happening. And, um, yeah, just self care has felt very different in this time. Surprisingly, mm-hmm. it hasn't been about like amping up, like either more quiet time or more meditation or I don't know, like mm-hmm. more commitment to fasting or plant based eating. Or it's been actually like whew, I'm mm-hmm. loosening up all these beliefs I had around like kind of what I had to do, not had to. Yeah. That's too strong, but like I found some things that really worked for me like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And kind of into two years ago. And then in the last year, it's been like, "Mm, those are all starting to feel a little confining. They've got beliefs attached to them that are maybe no longer serving me. So like I'm a predominantly plant-based eater. 
Um, and I don't know how much we're talking about other people in their work and things like that, but I have been listening to quite a lot of the tracks from this woman called The Oracle Girl, mm -hmm. Dr. Jacqueline Hobbs. And I find her very like, she's just got this nice neutral energy that I find yeah. very like cool for me right now in this time. Yeah. And there's something about what she transmits that I feel like in the background where I've had mm -hmm. some of these like still kind of putting some more stringent yeah. constructs on things, even though they have worked for me and helped me to feel better, like yeah. eating plant-based diet only, et cetera, have just been kind of like loosening up. And so I ate steak for the first time in three years and four months or whatever it's been. <laughs> and it was so, the experience of it was so pure. We were away. We traveled a couple of weeks ago to the Outer Banks of North Carolina to the beach for the week. My husband was making these beautiful steaks for the family. The whole process of him doing that just seemed mm -hmm. so wonderful. It felt like appealing and exciting. I didn't feel like normally around meat. I'm just kind of like, I just don't think it would feel good. Yeah. Like in the texture. No, I don't have like a sensory desire. And in that moment, I was like, mm -hmm. I want to eat these today that is so weird. Like I have this really clear desire, not going to question it at all. And it came to eat dinner. And I said, I'm going to have a steak tonight. And, you know, my family was a little like, okay, but like, I hope it's okay on your system. Like <laughs> yeah. they all know I don't eat meat very often. Yeah. I've eaten some fish from time to time, but very minimal. And I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure it's just going to be fine. Yeah. And it was so grounding. It was, mm. the texture was not didn't like, it wasn't disgusting to me, which right, normally right. it can be. So I was like, yeah. wow, it's enjoyable. It's grounding. I felt so like I needed that for whatever reason. I don't know if it was, you know, also from like minerals or whatever. And I was like, yeah. oh, apparently my body needed that. And then guess what? Haven't thought about eating it since. <laughs> So, because then there was a part of me that was like, oh, what if this creates this whole other, like, I go down this like other road? Because as people mm. may or may not know who are listening and have engaged with us in some of these talks in the past, I'm also a recovering alcoholic and addict. And so I think there's a part of my mind that wonders if I like open the door to something that mm. I now generally abstain from because it makes me feel better to not engage in yeah. it. Like, if I open the door, well, all of a sudden mm. I just go down that road or something and now start eating red meat all the time. Nope. I still love the way I eat predominantly, but in that <laughs> moment it felt exciting and wonderful. So like across all of these things, mm. meditation, I, I, who knows how many times a week I meditate. I don't keep track. Yeah. Four, probably five on average in different times of the day, in different ways. Yeah. But it's like a conscious connection or constant conscious yeah. connection now that shows up in all these different ways rather than a period that I did need to go through that was sure. more rigid in its like um, devotion, like setting up a certain type of rhythm that then now I feel it can be a bit more free. So it's been all of it. It's just, it's felt strangely lighter and looser in some of those ways when I think my old self would instinctually during a time like this collectively want to like clamp down on yeah. behaving in certain ways that would create a false sense of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's the word I was just going to, it's like that nice. control. Just when you said, it, I was like, yes, but no longer. Right. No, when, when we are, it's like you said, going through a period of time when you needed those sort of that sort of container. Okay. Every Great morning. Word meditate every morning. I'm going to, okay, I'm now I'm staying away from meat because I know I don't, but however we can, and, and we can do it anytime, right? We can soften those. And I love, I love that because I've, you know, for years, of course, being in this whole like coaching quote, quote unquote, I use spirituality in quotes, right? Because yep. that so too is its own container. Of that's its own container that can have limitation. a set of limitation implication. And people will often say, you know, even my family, like, I'll be at a family thing and, oh, Tara, yeah, you don't eat meat, right? So we'll just, and I'm like, and what, why, you know, and they have this, this idea or people have this idea, right? And this is kind of a different conversation, but that you are this way. So then you probably behave in these certain ways or do these certain things, you know? And it's like, actually, the reason I love the word infinity so much is because mm. everything is allowed there. 
and nothing is judged and nothing is right or wrong or good or bad. And Mm. so like you're saying, you know, like just being really honest and kind to ourselves and, oh, I really do want to eat this meat right now. It doesn't mean anything. It's just feeling really good and loosening those, those like constraints. And I've, I've been the same, you know, meditation, it happens when it feels right to happen. It happens, you know, because really the only reason to have those constraints is because we do feel out of alignment and we feel like, you know, and sometimes there's a time and a place for that as well. However, when we're really tuned in, when we're really just in every moment, like you, like you said before, when we were talking, like there's just not a tolerance anymore for being, for something not feeling right or feeling off. And so now there's this like, no, 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 no matter what anybody says or thinks or does, or a hundred million people in the world can say, this is the way it is. And if it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right for you. That's That's the sovereignty. That's the power of that. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And it does take, you know, I found for me, it has taken this like winding path of trying different things and yeah, operating within certain containers that help clarify something further that then you can move into more freedom around in another way. And then, but maybe another part needs a little container for a period of time. And we can then seek those out and feel great experimenting within them. But then, yeah, the self-sovereignty piece is huge. Um, And that those words as sort of the description for like true empowerment and like knowing oneself and trusting oneself and that anything that's appearing that we are creating because we are yep. from our That's right. consciousness. Yep. That that it is in our highest good. Yes. And so and it could be like the the deemed the worst thing possible, whatever you know one can imagine their life is happening, which a lot of that stuff has been showing up yes. in the appearance in the collective, right? Like lots of unrest in terms of employment and how people oh. are making incomes, right? And, and that we talked about in our death <laughs> yeah. talk, our truth talk about like job or income or whatever you want to assign that label to like yeah. money coming in and like yeah. it not happening. Death. Equals right? death. Like, yeah. It's right. just like the that primal part of the brain, like, you know, shoots off that signal. And, and yet like what that worst case scenario could be if it's labeled that from this type of place of operating I'm finding like nothing like that sticks yeah there might be a moment where the mind wants to try to like process and label something and you're like oh and we can get into this specific example but it's just hitting me right now I was sharing with Tara before we started that we've been given the opportunity to purchase this home that we're we've been renting for two years as we moved to Richmond we weren't sure if we wanted to stay which I love that we kept it totally open And now this very like, (laughs) like synchronicity on so many levels opportunity is appearing. And in the information that I was originally given about this, there were like two parts and one part was about the purchase. And the other part was like, when, if we didn't, you know, then we would need to move on to something else. Right. And that could potentially create so much contraction, but that part didn't even resonate. I was like, oh no, we're going to do this other part and I can just feel into that. And so it's where you point your attention as well yes. as things appear. Like, oh, I'm going to point my attention to the thing that feels most exciting. And that's not being delusional. That's not like magical thinking. That's I'm following my intuition and putting my attention, and my vibratory state and my like full mm. intention and then actions toward the thing that feels the best. Yeah. Toward the thing you want to create more of. Yeah. It's just like that, that part and the other parts there and the mind can pop in every once in a while. And I'm like, no, shush. (laughs) We're just going here. Thank you, mind. (laughs) Yeah. If we have to cross that bridge, right. Cause I'm also not holding on to any outcome either. And that is a huge part of this process that we're sort of describing. It's like Mm -hmm. something pops up. My mind might want to do something with it, but I'm going to feel into what's most exciting. Then take those aligned actions toward it. Oh, it really feels like it's happening. Cool. Still feels in alignment after taking some steps. And then the mind might come in again. And you're like, no, shush. I'm no, going to, shush. oh, but also I'm going to give this whole thing back to the universe yeah. out of gratitude and appreciation and not holding on to the outcome. Mm-hmm. And that dance of those steps is just like, 
honestly, I'm sure that I'll be tested in ways around this in my life and that will be cool too. But like, it's pretty, yeah, it's a pretty lovely way pretty of experiencing easy, it? things. It's pretty easy. And I think that's like the thing that's so, can be so challenging for people and for anybody on this planet, right? Is to really just get and embody on the deepest level possible that you don't have to make anything happen. Yeah. Or there's no need to force or to push or to make it happen or to figure it out. That or, phrase is the, the one for me. I have yes. To figure it out. Oh, well, let me go figure it out. Yeah. It's so like, Ooh, that, you know, then that just, I just see someone getting their list out of like pros and cons, you know, it's like, and I get it. I do. Yeah. I do. And if that's a process that one feels the mind needs to just make a mind dump on paper, yeah. like, great, do that. You know, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, just this, just this space of, of just total like beingness. And then even, even the whole like manifestation law of attraction game. Right. I mean, that's, like a whole nother thing. Like we, we are doing that always anyway, no matter what, how we're, no, no matter how we're engaging with it in the, in the illusion, right. We are yep. creating and manifesting. Um, but I, but oftentimes there's a lot of like holding on and, and wanting and needing and, you know, so like just manifesting like, something specific, yes. in a specific way. And this is yes. the kicker. I think for most of us um, and most others I like engage with is and in a specific time. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's right. the time one that I find messes with people the most. I think most yeah. people can like have lived, you know, if you're kind of in your, I don't know, from twenties onward have lived enough life to be like, all right, things yeah. don't necessarily always work out in detail the way I've envisioned. I can let go of that. But man, I really want it to happen in this time. No. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've decided, because when you go back to it and like somebody might be feeling anxious around something happening within a particular time and you question that gently, like, well, who decided? Like, who said it was going to happen in that time? Right. Right, there's certain... Yeah things in life that like happen in, you know, I don't know, you go to school for four years or something to go to college or, you know, like there's certain things that then the collective consciousness comes to just accept like, oh, this just must be the way it's done. Yeah. Right. But again, yeah. no, all of that's made up. Yeah. Uh, we just oh, agree to it. We do. We agree to so many things in our collective that we take as just, that's the way it is, you know, or that or like, I can't do anything about it. Like all of that, oh, you know, yeah. just be, Instantly yeah, becomes a limitation. Instantly, and I, yeah, that's one of my greatest excitements is for is to share and for people to to just have this like oh, anything, literally anything is possible. And I don't mean that in a way that you know, for every single person on the planet, you know, this anything is possible because I mean it is yes, technically of course, but there are things that we wouldn't even want to be possible, right? Like I don't well, want to be preference, an you know, preference yeah. being yeah. a part of then like. There's infinite possibility within yes. your blueprint, within yes. your excitement. Yes. And that, yeah. And the other version can feel a little overwhelming. Right. Like, like, oh, not. anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like within, yes, within what you have excitement around, like there's an infinite amount of possibilities and how that works out. And I, and I know you and I both have stores, like so many stories of what that actually looks like in the physical that, and it's, Every time, it's always something I never could have imagined with my mind. No, no it never would have never. come to me in the mind because I hadn't ever experienced it. And mm -hmm. with this, you know, with this person, this character has never experienced that before. So how would I, you know, so I love this idea of just loosening or getting rid of altogether any sort of expectation or even thought about something being a certain way like you're talking about self-care and how for so long it was like these things and then it's like oh that is the opposite now of self-care because I'm like contracted around it yes well that becomes the experience right it's like oh yeah. it, the initial excitement that was then working that didn't yeah. have any of that like contraction associated with it was great and then it shifts. It can, not always. Sometimes things stay pretty true for a long time. But certain yeah. things that do shift, I notice for me, start to feel like a should. 
Yes. Oh, but I've been doing this this way for whatever reason for this time. So I should just keep doing, wait, 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 (laughs) pause there. Yeah. Oh, this is turning into one of them, those limiting containers now instead of an expansive one. Okay. What can I play with? And then I really use the words explore, experiment, and play Mm -hmm. a lot with me and everybody. Because then you're like, oh, well, I'm just going to play with this. Yes. I'm going to try something. Oh, what? Oh, my highest excitement is eating the steak, like in that example. And like to be all in on it. Yeah. I there was that. no questioning. There yeah. was no guilt. Oh, what will happen to me? What does this mean about who I am? Nothing, actually. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. No, <laughs> literally no conclusions. So yeah. the, the one sticking thought I did have that still kind of is round <laughs> is... I don't love the way in which animal products are like yes. raised yes. and processed and like yes. that piece of the business of eating yes. meat. Right. So that was the only piece that I was like, okay, in this moment, I know I'm participating in that. Right. All right. I'm going to let that, you know, and, but then you make your choice, well. but yeah. I made the choice. And yeah. then from that moment of making the choice, there was no, yeah. Um, residual. That's what I'm looking for. Like any, yeah stickiness or guilt or shame or nope, nothing like just right. all in this feels great. You can do that with anything. anything. I'm just going to try this. The caveat and like the nuance, right. Is, is it truly feeling like aligned? I like using that word aligned rather than labeling anything like, was oh, it right. good for me? Right. Cause none of that's real either. Yeah. But does it feel aligned and have this lightness and this freedom? Yeah. Great. If yeah. not, and it kind of makes me feel icky or, in the, you know, in case, in, in the case of eating something like, oh, my body actually did really react. Okay. Then no, I'll listen to that. Yeah. Like that being the guidance, because I do come from a background of understanding alcoholism and drug addiction. Yeah. Teasing out what feels good, not from a numbing place. Right. And from a creating more contraction and more of a container place. Yes. But from it feels super light. Like, oh, I didn't, yeah. I did that. And I didn't even think about it again after yeah. that kind of mm. um, nuance of understanding. Um, yeah. Like high. That's a really, yeah. It's like a subtle distinction, right? It's very, it is. You have to my... play with it to know like, yeah. Is yeah. 10 hours of Netflix going to make me feel good? Or is that just <laughs> what I really want right now to like check out? Right. No. After yeah. 10 hours, I'm going to feel like the next day. And this is, is fascinating for me as somebody who that does not consume any like mood altering substances. If I do like a long binge of Netflix, which I've done. Sure. The next day I feel awful. Mm. Yeah. It just, like whatever that much screen time in that way, you right. know, whatever it does to it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. No, it doesn't make me feel so good. Yeah. So then that's information to have about yes. like, well, why did I feel like I needed to check out in that way for that period yep. of time? And like, oh, I've, maybe I won't do that again <laughs> the next time. Yeah. Yes. And it's being, like you said, still playful and coming from that place of non judgment. Like, not like, oh, I can't believe I did that. It's so awful. I'm so horrible for, you know, having XYZ. It's just like, oh, it made me feel this way and being curious and open about it and playing with it and knowing too that you can't screw this up. Like nothing you do is going to like send you down some rabbit hole of like, you know, it's just, you can't screw it up because even well, if you even go if down did, some rabbit hole, yeah, it's still perfect. It's, it's still supposed like, to, like that was then supposed, supposed to, to yeah. have happened to then lead yep. you to the next place of understanding or yes. of more clarity or more alignment or whatever yes. it is. And like, yeah, is it always fun for the person? No, <laughs> but you at, but you're creating, but, you asked for it on some yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. So just those, those subtle distinctions, it's like, you don't have to like get it right. Like just play and just, and I, and I find too, that if I'm, if something really is truly light and fun and yeah, this feels great. And I'm not having a thought about the outcome. I'm not like, what is this going to then mean? It's yeah. like, just you're doing it versus like, if you have a good feeling about doing something, you know, doesn't serve you, then there's like, Oh, but then, you know, there's like this attachment still to it, to the outcome of it. 
my, again, amazing Yoda-like Alexander technique teacher <laughs> has a term for that. And I think it's a term maybe used in Alexander. She's developed it along the way called end gaining mm. and wanting to project to what, like, like moving your body in a way that's already trying to get to the end result of the movement rather than like breathing through every like experience of the movement to love it. Mm. instead of like oh I need to get from point A to point B mm. and when we do that yeah and then we're already attached to whatever the outcome could be and then what if that doesn't turn out well then the judgment comes so like no end gaining no end gaining I love that term that was a good one. yeah you're just in it you're just present with it you're just in it um yeah, I think now is like as we know all the collectively all the stuff that's going on, you know, in our in our in our world that we see is like the time more than ever before that it's relevant to really feel into this for oneself in everything that you're doing. Yes. Why? You know, everything you're believing why? What's why? underneath that? Why? Mm -hmm. What's there? Like just being honest with yourself because then all the fear around it goes away. You know, mm -hmm. when we just bring it out into the light and look at it, you know, like whatever that is, whatever that means for you. Yep. Yeah. No, it's such a great pointer. And yeah. However that appears then for somebody or sticks with yeah. them, if they're listening or listen to this later is like, oh yeah. What what's appearing it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to make sense that i would li like to understand more about like why and then and who has said like who yeah. has said that this yeah is supposed to be this way yeah. and then That's people awesome. can find their path to whatever yep. might feel most aligned in terms of like oh well, this entity or this group of people or this person or whatever has said this is why that is the way it is whether it's our like family of origin belief stuff right. or or something more current oh, well, whatever it is, I, that feels right to me or that doesn't. And that's, you know, that's been coming up a lot too, um, is the idea of like what's true and what's not. Yeah. Well, and in the, in the illusion, everything, it, the relatively anything could be true. Right. Yeah. Look. Or it's all false too. Or it's like, all, false, yeah, exactly. Like either. whatever you believe is yeah. going to be your truth, but, but ultimately none of it that's is it. false. You know, whatever is your truth. Yeah. And that I don't, this is, I'm by no means an expert in what I'm about to say, but this just comes from my intuition and also from working with many others is like from an evolutionary standpoint mm. to be safe and to procreate and to get to the place where we've gotten, where we've actually done that really well. I think there's maybe more of a, <laughs> there's quite a many. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This whole procreation thing. Out. We've got that down. Yeah. That's what we've done really well in terms of like from a um right like species surviving perspective yeah. right so we've done that to a certain degree but like almost at what cost and then yeah. and then you know like the consciousness is catching up mm -hmm. and and then there's all of this data and information and like sort of the digital age and all this stuff and it's like okay are we really truly able to process all of that and yeah. now i've got all these authority figures there's so many that it's like, oh, not just like my parents, like, let's say we'll talk about a kid, right? Like my parents, <laughs> my teachers, the president, and I don't know, and the police, that's, that's obviously a very relevant topic right now. Right? Oh, well, <laughs> now there's all of these yeah. input points for doing the assessing that we're just talking about, right? Yeah. Like, well, well, I don't know, I think of my son, like, well, who made that video game? What are they trying to convey? Like you're engaging with it. You know, what are you going to take away about what you believe about the world from that? Like, yeah. mm, you know, it yeah. might not have like a malicious or a whatever intent, yeah. but like, how is it affecting you? Right. And, and I think I'm noticing what's happening with people, both like my son's age and then people in my world and having conversations like this is like, oh, only I can determine my truth yeah. and it might be different than my family member's truth or sure. you know my friend's truth or whoever in the world a whole different group of people oh okay and then continuing to walk that path mm -hmm. and I think what question that comes up for people with that then is like but what if like 
one person's truth is so diametrically opposed to the other person's truth, which is the story that we're being told right now about large groups of people, right? Or like these sure, truths politics, yeah, so different, yeah. right? It's like set yeah. up to pit one side against right. the other. To separate us more, yeah. To separate us more. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, that's fine. They can have this totally different truth. What I noticed then is happening is this, and this is, I guess, always been the case with like sort of the more extreme, Dream, for lack of a better word, I don't love that word either, but spectra, on the spectrum of belief are actually like wrapped around and are right yep. next to each other. Yes. And then, so it's actually the middle part that's the most opposed, which is fascinating. Yeah. And so it's like, it's all going to come back around. And, and then it is all one thing. Yeah. It really is all, we all want very similar things. And I think in terms of senses of fulfillment, yeah. just that word, I think fulfillment can capture so much. And it's like all the other details in the illusion are irrelevant. Like the sense of truth of infinite self, mm -hmm. expansive, free life. Yeah. Freedom. Oh, I think freedom. that's such an important sense, you know, thing for, yeah, that sense that we have when we come in as little, little children, you know, we just, that's their innate nature is really is our own, um, our own sovereignty is inherent in us right? It is inherent in us. And we have that ability and that power. Um, and then it just gets, you know, it gets uh, unfortunately kind of beat out of us, if you will, I by... I think it's had to yeah. in evolution yeah. and yes. in awakening. And otherwise we would have all gone crazy. And like, if we could see all the things, I think, yeah, at a certain just from point, the get go. Yeah. Well, well then yeah, there may not be that much point to incarnating on earth, right? Because right. it's like, <laughs> that's to go the through game. this human process. That's the game. Yeah, that's that, as Jacqueline called the slave self, the slave, slave technology self. that has been, that that has all been perfect. It has all been for a reason, you know, for us to go through this. Oh, wait, none of those things that I'm currently plugged into really mean anything unless I want them to. So what would it be like to unplug myself from all the, anybody telling me anything about anything? If we can just be very broad, you know, right. telling me anything is a certain way about anything. And I unplug from all of that. And then there's like this free fall that can be kind of scary because honestly, we people, humans have always been told what to do. That's right. Always. We've always been cattled through and told what to do and how to do it and when and where and what timeline and what's right and what's wrong. And so to have that unplugging, I can be very terrifying for a lot of folks. And I get that, right? It's that, yep. So you can do it slowly, right? What if I unplug this piece over here? And then what if I unplug this piece? Oh my mm -hmm. God. And then just and I'm like, still okay. Like I'm I, still I always okay. find that's the most amazing yeah. part of the experience yeah. with the person. It's yeah. like you do the thing that feels risky to the mind and like the person self, and then you do it and then you're okay. You're like better than okay. You're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, this is even better. Oh, it's yeah. Reclaiming all that freedom and that just like, oh, it just feels so good. Oh, it's so exciting. So that is that energy we're talking about in this creating with this energy, creating from this place of like, if you were a complete sovereign being and you knew you were acting, you know, in the highest good of yourself and all beings simply from your excitement and your truth. And that, and that was the truth, right? Then what would it be like to create from that space? Even while, meanwhile, you know, you're still engaging with the, the 3D world and you're you know. Well, that's when we were talking about the theme for this talk, that's really been, I think, throughout this journey for me. At some points, it was more painful and I was less aware of it. Now that I'm more aware of it, I'm actually really enjoying the dance back and forth mm -hmm. between like, I don't know, I was like paying your taxes, like doing something like that. Right. And it's like, yeah, all right, I'm just going to engage with this, but from a place of appreciation. I created it. I'm part of this collective that is like collectively agreeing on this particular construct. And I am grateful for some of the collective services that it like pays into roads and, you know, things sure. in my community. Okay, fine. So I'm going to appreciate it. 
rather than, oh, there's this authority figure around finances and my life and they're taking my money, right? Like you can assign all of these like negative and scary and like black belief, fear-based beliefs to any of those kind of entities that you can like make an authority figure over you and then you're giving your power away. So yes. that has been such a fascinating dance or like um, I'm co-creating with two other beautiful beings, a I call it an organism because every time we try to call it an organization, that just feels super old and not yeah. our highest vision. And we constantly are bumping up against all of it, right? Like yeah. interviewing people for a potential support position turned into an incredible discussion mm -hmm. around trust, uh, bias, discrimination, like I was bumping, I'm a former recruiter from in the advertising industry. So I've got a whole bunch of old conditioning around that, that I haven't been playing with. And so when this like one particular like act of having a conversation with somebody in that vein came up, I was like, Whoa, mm -hmm. I'm like this old stuff's trying to come in and I know it's no longer relevant. And so I could say it out loud mm -hmm. because I'm in this beautiful there are certain beautiful containers, right? We're talking about the yeah. ones you like kind of outgrow. Well, this one right yeah. now feels like a really like consciously created container of let's all say what's happening as it's happening. Oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm bumping up against these old beliefs, behaviors, like patterns that's clearly not relevant here. So let me just say that that's what's happening for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I'm just going to trust you that you're on a different vibe with this and let's just go with it because I know where I'm at right now is not aligned with our highest vision. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it's that. transparency. And in the moment it's uncomfortable because then mm -hmm. there's emotions and stuff is attaching to it, but then you just like, let it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's with every dynamic with family, with, especially with children, mm -hmm. like, oh, am I assigning a belief to how I want this little person to potentially be in the world? And like mm -hmm. some, do I have some hope or outcome? Wait, yep, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I gotta release that. And I say, I got to, cause it's like, no, if I don't, I know it's not going to be helpful. Yeah. It's not gonna so be in like a real loving way. Yeah. yeah. So with everything, I don't know, I'm going to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like for me right now and and this is such a, um, I think it's a huge distraction issue actually, though I know other people feel differently about it, but like the whole mask thing, like if I have to wear a mask to go into store, fine. <laughs> I'm just going to wear a mask to go in the store because I'm not going to believe that it is somehow like limiting me or whatever. Yeah. Right. But that, but that's just for me. So it's like, I can do that and I don't have to solve the problem for everybody else. Yeah. or the election yeah. like it could go either way yeah. of course because it will go either way or some yeah. weird way in the middle and <laughs> yeah. that all that's all going to be fine too yeah oh right so it's like each thing that appears is like yeah. doing that process that we're talking about yes and and it's like uh the word you know participation or what are they like contributing to like in each Ooh. moment like, how do I want to be contributing to this thing? And so even if it's a, like a old structure or system that doesn't feel right or doesn't, you're like, oh, well, I know that's antiquated. I know that's eventually going to fall away, right? Like say our banking system or, you know, yeah. it's things that we are still involved in because we just are, right? I mean, we yeah. don't have to be, we could take all our money out and put it under the mattress. That's also possible. But however, there's so many, so many things we can't do unless we have a bank account, right? Yeah. So but how do I want to, what energy do I want to contribute to this? And like you were saying, you get to choose how you frame it, you know? So, um, but there's some instances where one might say, actually, I don't want to contribute. I'm saying no to that system. I'm Absolutely. saying, I'm saying, no, I'm opting out. So that's been a lot of my, what I've been playing with lately is like, what can I just opt out of? Like yep. flat out opt out of, I don't actually have to be engaged in that system anymore. Yep. Right. And once that I feel I still do for some reason until there's this bridge, like money, for example, right? Because I'm moving into crypto now, which yep. I you know if anybody's excited about that, I highly recommend it. It's super fun. Yeah, many uh, people are. So many. I know it's just, oh, it's just so good. So, you know, what do I, how do I want to participate and engage 
even in this moment. So yep. we can still ground ourselves in that new creative energy with integrity, which just means to me, integrity is what's in alignment for me right yep. now in this moment. And without buying into the whole, like, you know, like stories around, oh, there's still some authority that has control over yeah. me and this or that way, or, um, you know, or bringing fear into the equation. Like, you know, I have to move all my money over because it's not safe in the banking system. You know, it's like, so it's just, what do, what do we want? What do you want to create? And then come from that energy of it and everything will magically, naturally just sort of sh shift and sort itself out because in the end, none of it is that meaningful anyway. None of it means anything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think of, you know, a very tactical, because I did, I thought of some like sort of more or wanting to at least cover off on some more mundane things, but something funny, like not funny necessarily, but I think it's kind of funny because of the system and structure that seems to be struggling around this particular um, construct and idea, which is recycling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a whole, you start to do some research on that one and it's, oh, right. Yeah. Like, yeah, it would be wonderful. I think if it actually did work, I think the way it was initially intended to work, but there's like lots of complexities so around yeah. yeah like holes in that whole system and structure yeah and then and also like growing one's own food and things like that and so we have compost here in our house we have like the big compost bins out in the back we have a garden we have chickens we mm -hmm. have rain water like re reclamation off the roof yeah. but like that system's really hard to maintain so we might not continue with that like yeah like benefit versus like, yes, it was yeah. something that's been attempted and we've had a little experience with, but no, maybe that one isn't just feeling as aligned anymore. It's feeling more contracting than not yeah. or things that might, and this is the main point I'm getting to is what is in my life, in my life experiencing, in my illusion that allows me to then live more expansively. And like, for me personally, that means to be of service to I don't know if I love the phrase more people, but like this sense of like, it's happening in a really aligned, like quality way. And if stuff's getting in the way of that, but that there was the intention was good, but oh, hold yeah. on, mm -hmm. <laughs> let me look at this whole system. Like luckily we do recycle here and there's a very like, you know, robust program, at least where we are in the city. But let's say they didn't, mm. and we had to take it far to do that. So that, but then, then that would take away from like my highest excitement of being engaged and having conversations like this. Oh, well, there's that sort of like, to use a really 3D term, but like cost benefit analysis for like sure. alignment to my truth. Yeah. And that's like, oh, we can play with growing food. And we did all summer and it was great. And to a certain degree that we were able to then buy less and also know that we know how to plant seeds and grow food in case we need to. Yeah. Great. Okay. It's fun. Yeah. We're playing with it. We've got chickens. They lay yeah. Them. Yeah. Them. sometimes they don't and then you buy them you know like uh -huh. it, so there are things that feel fun to play with until they don't and I think yeah. that's the point of making it's like then looking at like oh it doesn't and then if you do some research on the actual thing that you think is this amazing thing that you should be doing all the time except it's starting to feel really heavy you can usually see that there's a lot of holes yeah in really all, any and all system and structure so it's like which ones are you going to play with at mm -hmm. any given time. Right. Cause yeah. And it, like you said, all of our systems and structures thus far that we have in the 3d are pretty shoddy. I mean, they're built on like sand pretty much. <laughs> and they're built my experience, on, you know? Ultimately really, I think we could probably trace almost all of them back though. I'm sure there's some that aren't, but the majority are based on lack, belief, fear, oh, scarcity, yeah. 100%. and then ultimately profit for yes. uh, at the end of the day, the larger profits for a very small group of people. So like, yes. which, which their goes in for, they don't at, yeah at their core they're yeah they're built on fear and, and that goes into the whole slave self thing like they're built for the folks in the you know the matrix in the slave self it's like okay we're all going to do this thing and so that's what that so that's like being really really aware of your energy and your intention when you're engaging with it you yes. know so that oh i'm engaging in one of these systems right now yeah okay i like i i'm fully aware and I'm choosing to do rather yes. than feeling like, and I, I don't have. love the word victim, but rather like that something's yeah. happening to you. Like, oh, yes. this thing, the system is happening to me and I have no like 
consent or participation in it. No, no. Yes. You're, you're, you do. You yeah. do. You do. You can always. From a yeah. place of love, like from not a from a place of, place of blame, but just like, oh, I'm an active participant in what's showing yeah. up in my illusory yes. circumstantial stuff. And you can always just say no, you know, to the best of your ability, you can just say no. You know, I know that's a lot of the kind of fear stuff going on right now too, with like a vaccine agenda and all these things and people, well, then we won't be able to buy groceries if we don't get the vaccine, you know, like I, of course that's, that's a possibility. And then we'll find new ways. We'll right? find like, let's new. Wait and see how that well, plays out. Yeah. Well, and let's, yeah, let's, so first of all, yeah, we don't have to be afraid of it. Uh, we can be aware of it though. And, and we can mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm not, no, I'm not going to participate in that. I'm not going to participate in that system or that structure and, and, and for me or anybody else. And like anything is, we are the most creative beings. Like we can create anything. We can create whole systems where we're growing our own food and trading it having chickens and uh, you know there's so there's no need to be like oh god you know however however one feels to stand up or be activated is you know perfect as well so <laughs> there's yeah. no judgment in any of that no um, but yeah it's oh man so much so much here <laughs> and i know it's wrapping up we're wrapping up in time i know so oh bonita yeah. <laughs> So good. And the other thing I want to say too, I was thinking about this. I do a fair amount of podcast interviews and things yes. and talk about, you know, depending on the theme of the podcast, you know, we'll focus on various different themes of a holistic, like loved life, which is sort of yeah. the focus of my business. And, you know, I, I get off some of these calls or these conversations and I'm like, oh yeah, but it's not like <laughs> perfect. <laughs> like it's mm. not, you know, there are moments of questioning. There are moments of, at least for me, like I'm still fairly identified with like, it's like a toggling back and forth between like my like highest self or connection to source. And then, and my truth and my intuition. And then like these person moments in the mind, like getting loud. Right. And this is back and forth. And I just like to say that, right. Like it's not yeah. Because I think for me as a listener of any of this type of content, I can take away like, oh, like, oh, I kind of want to experience more of that. So I'm going to want to go do all those things. And it's like, yeah. it's, it's such a unique journey and mm -hmm. process for everyone. Um, and so, and each set of circumstances and blueprint is so beautifully different for everyone, yes. which is awesome. Yes. But yes. I like to throw that in there now, just as that reminder. Um I like that take you know the very simple that very simple pointer like take what works and leave the rest yeah absolutely and and yeah there's no need to judge oneself at all on you know if something if something ticks for you though then go oh well, that, yeah cool how can i integrate that into my life you know or not yeah absolutely yeah it's all that's the whole point of 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 that supreme inner authority right is right, that self that sovereignty oh, is being yes. able to say like yes this feels awesome to me right now yeah and like no that, that no, doesn't I'm gonna let that go yeah and trust it and just trust that yeah so beautiful thanks Benita for Thank being you. here with me today my pleasure so always lovely and where can people find you um, they can find me um, um, on my contact page on my website. So that's createradicallove.com. Um, yeah, there's multiple places there where you can find my little contact yeah. form. And then um, on Instagram, I'm Benita underscore Condi. And on Facebook, I'm Benita Condi. And um, yeah, those are the main ways. Okay, great. Yes. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Contact me if you feel to do so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please, I'm yes. happy to talk about any yes. and all of this. Yes. Always. Awesome. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Tara. Thanks.